this video, I will demonstrate how to set up a highly available Jenkins master in AWS using Terraform. Let's start by taking a look at the high-level architecture. At minimum, you will need to select an AWS region. This is where you would like to provision your Jenkins master. Ideally, you will want to select a region that's closest to your end users to minimize any latency issues. Next, you will need a virtual private cloud, or VPC. We will use Elastic File System, or EFS, to store Jenkins home data. EFS is a scalable, elastic, cloud-native NFS file system that can be mounted on up to 1,000 servers in a specific region. We'll also need an auto-scaling group, which will maintain Jenkins master availability based on certain checks. If the checks fail, the Jenkins master will automatically be replaced with a new one. The launch configuration is essentially a template for spinning up a new Jenkins master. And finally, an elastic load balancer, preferably an application load balancer, so that your end users can reach your Jenkins master using the ALB DNS name without actually having to worry about the actual IP addresses of the backend Jenkins master that they are pointing to. Now that we've gone over the architecture, let's go ahead and see how you can set it up using Terraform. In terms of the prerequisites, first, you will need to make sure that you have Terraform version 0.14 installed on your local machine. Next, you'll need an AWS account, which you will use to provision your Jenkins resources. You will need corresponding IAM privileges also an SSH key pair to connect to your Jenkins instances, and finally, CLI credentials for programmatic access to your AWS resources. With prerequisites behind us, let's take a look at the Terraform working directory. There are two files in this directory. The first one is a main.tf file, and it creates an elastic file system it fetches subnets for default VPC, which we are using for the purpose of the demo. It creates Jenkins auto-scaling group and a launch configuration to launch Jenkins instances. And it creates application load balancer and also the security groups for Jenkins master, elastic file system, and application load balancer. The second file is a mars.tf file and this is where we will define all the variables. Here is the GitHub repository with the Terraform configuration. There are two files in here. The first one is a main.tf. And what this does is it creates the security groups for Jenkins, for Elastic File System, and Application Load Balancer. It also creates the Elastic File System, Jenkins Launch configuration, auto-scaling group, and finally, an application load balancer. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second file, which is wars.tf. And in here, we are defining variables for AWS region, the SSH key name that will be used to connect to your Jenkins instance, the instance type, Jenkins port, and the application load balancer port. There's also a readme file, which has comprehensive information on what resources will be provisioned, the prerequisites, and the steps that you need to perform to set up a highly available Jenkins master in a single region in AWS. It's now time to see this in action. I'll start by going to Terraform Demos, and I will clone this repository here. I've cloned my GitHub repository, and now I'm going to run Paraform in it to initialize my working directory. Next, I'm going to run Paraform apply. And I'll say yes to go ahead and proceed with creating all the resources. 
Okay, it's starting to create the resources. And this can take a couple of minutes. Okay, it did output the application load balancer DNS name, and this is what we'll copy. It's time to test on the browser. I'll paste the ALB DNS name. And the first screen that you're going to see is the unlock Jenkins screen. I need to retrieve the initial admin password from the Jenkins instance that has been set up. Logged into the Jenkins EC2 instance, elevating my privileges. And I'll go ahead and copy the initial admin password. I'll go ahead and paste the initial admin password, click continue, and then I'll install suggested plugins. And then I'll go ahead and create first admin user. Click Save and Continue. The Jenkins URL looks fine. Click Save and Finish. And then finally, click Start Using Jenkins. And here comes the Jenkins dashboard. What I'll do is I'll create two freestyle jobs. I'll call the first one first. Click OK. And I'll just include one step, and all that does is it just echoes my first freestyle project. Click Save. And I'll go ahead and click Build Now. Looks good. I'll try to click build now again. Just so we have some build history for this job. I'll go ahead and repeat the steps for creating my second freestyle job. And this will also include just one build step and that's echoing my second freestyle project. I'll click build now. Looks good. Just one more time. That looks good. Let's look at the console output. Back to the dashboard. What I want to do right now is I want to go ahead and terminate my Jenkins EC2 instance. I want to see if the auto scaling policies will kick in and create a new Jenkins instance. I'll go back to my Jenkins UI and if I do a refresh, here you go, I see an error. Back to the AWS console, you'll see that a new Jenkins EC2 instance is being created.
take a couple of minutes, but um, when it comes up, then you're directed to the login screen. I'll enter my credentials. Here is my Jenkins dashboard, and as you can see, all my jobs are here. My first job, my second job, the entire build history as well. 